Well, more drama is expected in the British Parliament today after lawmakers rejected a no-deal withdrawal from the EU. Voting last night paves the way for another vote today to delay Britain's exit date beyond March the 29th. But British Prime Minister Theresa May has also set out plans for a third parliamentary vote on her overall Brexit deal with Europe. That vote is supposed to be held by March the 20th. Responding to her latest defeat, a very hoarse Prime Minister had this to say. The legal default, the legal default in UK and EU law remains that the UK will leave the EU without a deal unless... Unless, unless something else is agreed. The onus is now on every one of us in this house to find out what that is. The options before us are the same as they always have been. We could leave, we could leave with the deal which this government has negotiated over the past two years. We could leave with the deal we have negotiated but subject to a second referendum. But that would risk no Brexit at a all. A number of options out there. So what happens next? Joining us now for the latest is DW's Beggett Moss in London and Max Hoffman, our Brussels bureau chief. Uh, good morning to both of you. Uh, Beggett, if, if we could start with you uh, this morning. Theresa May has said that the situation right now is that in spite of last night's vote, the Brexit options remain the same. Is that where we are right now? No, something has changed. What she's talking about is her deal is the only deal, basically, that's still on the table. And she's still hoping also to get it through because now she really can exert more pressure on parliamentarians because the choice is this, as she puts it. It's my deal, Theresa May's deal, that she's hammered out with the European Union or either no Brexit at all or a really long, lengthy Brexit process in which everything can happen, a second referendum could happen. So Theresa May will once again try and put her deal on the table because she knows that for those people who want out in her own party, there are many of them, they will now think long and hard that might be their last chance that they get to exit the European Union. So maybe if there is yet one more vote, she might just get her will, she might get her deal through. OK, we might uh, also see an extension uh, uh, voted on today and, and a possible extension. Uh, Max, how would the EU respond to that scenario? Had you asked me that question a couple of weeks ago, Brian, I would have said definitely they'll say OK. But their stance has toughened a little bit in the last days. They've made it clear that they need a reason to extend, whether this be a short extension, a technical extension, that's what it would be, would be called for two or three months, or a longer extension uh, beyond the European elections I in May. And the, a possible reason, for example, is a second referendum or maybe even snap elections, or, as Theresa May put it, if she puts that deal up for another vote and it gets passed, there would also be need for a technical extension, because now the time has run out to really implement any kind of deal until the 29th of March. So you would need a couple of extra weeks or even extra months to be able to implement that. The EU wouldn't have any problem in, in granting that technical extension if uh, the Parliament, so the House of Commons, uh, said OK to their deal. Everything else seems uh, up in the air, because it, it, it doesn't look like the House of Commons uh, beyond maybe approving that deal seems able to clarify what this extension should really be for. Okay, uh, Birgit, Max has mentioned the technical extension term there. We're looking at a possible date of May or, or June. Can the British government or can Parliament guarantee that at the end of that process, at the end of that date, we're not going to repeat everything we've been over this week all again in May or June? The thinking here in London is, like Max has said, two possibilities and MPs will get a vote later today what sort of extension the Prime Minister uh, is looking for from the EU, either a short one at which the uh, deal, Theresa May's deal, will most likely be implemented or a long one which would give just more leverage to those who are fighting for a second referendum, a so-called people's vote. And that is a longer period that might be a few years. And in this few years, we have another long period of uncertainty. So these two options are really on the table at the moment. But, like Mark said, the EQ has to agree first. So it's one thing 
what parliamentarians here in London want and the other thing, what can actually be agreed with the European Union. Okay, Max, what does it look like in Brussels? You know, we're talking about the technical extension. There's also the longer extension. That could be up for up to two years. That's a speculation right now. What would Brussels do in that case? Yeah, I mean, just to be clear here, uh, and then Birgit is absolutely right in mentioning that, the reaction uh, Wednesday night from the EU Commission was it's all good and well that the House of Commons decides that there won't be a, a no-deal Brexit, but really that's still the default option. And in order to really avoid a no-deal uh, Brexit, you need a deal. So that's still where we are. We call it the Brexit conundrum right here. And because of this situation, you have more and more EU lawmakers, and we talked to many of them over the course of this week, who are pushing for a second referendum, especially, of course, the Social Democrats, because that's the same line that Labour has, so the Social Democratic Party back in the UK. Uh, but that would only be possible with a longer extension, if we are talking one or two years. But that, of course, has different problems. Uh, for example, the European elections in May. If we go beyond that date, significantly go beyond that day, then the UK would ha have to participate in those elections. And that would be awkward, wouldn't it? You have a country that actually wanted to leave but still has to participate in the EU elections, uh, something that many lawmakers want to avoid because it might hijack the, the actual topics, you know, the actual things they want to talk about. And there are many of them, migration, climate change, just to mention two of them. Okay, Max Hoffman for us in Brussels. Bigot Moss in London, thanks so much for bringing us up to date as another vote looms today in the British Parliament.